And so I make money through my blog with five main income streams. The biggest one is ad revenue. So that is when people come to the website, there's ads on my website. I, I'm with what I call a classy ad network. So it's not like spammy, pop up, clickbait. Right. It's like a classy ad network. Like, right. you know, you see the ads as you scroll. It doesn't interfere with the reading process. But um, that is my biggest money maker is okay. ads on the website. So they just have to put eyeballs on it. They don't even have to click on it. Right. I also make money by selling digital products. So handouts, workbooks, ebooks. Um, so yeah, ebooks is another one. And mm -hmm. I also have started selling on Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. Gotcha. So if someone wants like a physical product, Amazon will print and ship. Okay. Um, I also make money through a course that I have on my website. So that was something I recorded once, one and done. Mm -hmm. People continue to buy it, make a hundred bucks a pop every time they buy it. And then I make money through Amazon affiliates. <music>
come at this from a different angle because the first thing I had to do is I had to find a piece of land, mm -hmm. okay, to build this house on. So with a blog, it, it, isn't that a piece of digital land yep. that someone has? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Talk about it. Yeah, no, and I, I've talked about this before, blogging, how blogging is like online real estate. Mm -hmm. You have to pay money for your blog to live on the internet, but it's not nearly as much money as we pay for land. Right. For your blog, for the first year of blogging, it's going to cost you under $100. You have to pay for your website name. You have to pay for your website hosting, and that's just where your website lives on the internet. But what other business has such low overhead that yeah. you can have an online business for under a hundred dollars. Now, of course, there's other expenses that you could add in, no matter how big or small you wanted to go. But compared to a house, I mean, that's that's pretty darn low to start. Yeah. So you're talking a hundred dollars versus all of this land we have here. This was about seventy five thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, are you kind of following this, right? But without the land, you can't build the content, right? Yes. You can't build um, the, the 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 infrastructure. So we had that first. And then we started to build on it. With a blog, you're paying a couple hundred bucks and it's giving you your digital property. Yep. Now you still gotta build the digital house. Yes. And that's the blog. So let's 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 talk about you know that as well. You know, that's not a six hundred and thirty thousand dollar asset, I'm assuming, no. to get a blog started, no. right? So so we know what this is, this asset would be. Can you tell me kind of what goes into creating a blog and then how does a blog aka a digital house mm -hmm. actually make you rental income yeah 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 um you know we were talking about this too about how so many of us want to invest um in real estate um the stock market we want to have these investments that are making passive income meaning we're, we're making money every month on these assets but a lot of us don't have the capital up front to put down all this money down on a property yeah. but some of us have time so you have money or you have time. Mm -hmm. So for those who have time and a passion for building online business, blogging is amazing. So I, I mentioned that you you do have to have some expenses to have your online real estate, but mm -hmm. really your blog is your platform for online business. Mm -hmm. Now, a blog, and actually, let me back up. I use the terms website and blog interchangeably. Technically, they're different, but I do use them the same. Your website is, we all know what a website is, right? You got your homepage, your about page, your contact page. A blog is a section of a website. Mm -hmm. And with bloggers, we are putting out blog articles, <laughs> a couple every month. It could be a couple every week. It depends on the pace of our blog. But these blog articles that we put out, we use the power of search engine optimization to drive massive traffic to our website. Mm -hmm. So when people go on Google, they search topics related to our niche. It brings up our articles. People click on it. They come to our website, they read our articles, and we have the opportunity to make money because people are coming to our websites with problems and we have solutions. Right. So my primary blog is called The Geriatric Dietitian. Mm -hmm. I started it in June of 2019. Okay. So it's it's getting up there. It's I, We celebrated the five-year anniversary of the yeah, blog. Yeah. And so with that particular blog, I am not interested in working with clients. So if you wanted to work with clients, a blog is a great way to get people coming to your website and you could work with clients. But that was never something I wanted to do with my right, blog. Right. And so I make money through my blog with five main income streams. The biggest one is ad revenue. So that mm -hmm. is when people come to the website, there's ads on my website. I, I'm with what I call a classy ad network. So it's not like spammy, pop up, clickbait. Right. It's like a classy ad network. Like, right. you know, you see the ads as you scroll. It doesn't interfere with the reading process. But um, that is my biggest money maker is okay. ads on the website. So they just have to put eyeballs on it. They don't even have to click on it. Right. I also make money by selling digital products. So handouts, workbooks, ebooks. Um, so yeah, ebooks is another one. And mm -hmm. I also have started selling on Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. Gotcha. So if someone wants like a physical product, Amazon will print and ship. Okay. Um, I also make money through a course that I have on my website. So that was something I recorded once, one and done. Mm -hmm. People continue to buy it, make a hundred bucks a pop every time they buy it. And then I make money through Amazon affiliates. Okay. So as I recommend different products related to geriatrics, someone clicks on that link, I make a small commission, but it's still another stream of income. Right. So ad revenue, digital goods, um, eBooks and books, courses, and affiliates. Um, affiliates. Right. And that's just what I do. Like, so, there's all these other ways that you can make money using this platform because the goal, build massive traffic provide value and make passive income where you don't have to trade time for money. All right. So let's kind of put this together, guys. So I'm thinking of this house. It's like, all right, I've got the the land. 
Okay, that's basically my hosting. I have the house now, and in the house, there is five different rooms that I can use to generate income, yeah. right? So, you know, I don't do that with this house. I have, you, you, just, you just rent the house, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, we can say like bedroom one, courses. Bedroom yeah. two, that's my eBooks. Bedroom three, I got affiliates. Bedroom four, ad revenue. Bedroom five, uh, forgot the last one. But anyways, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> so, so there's five different things, five different ways for me to make money. So can we talk about a few things with regards to those? Uh, how much traffic do you need in order to get the, these ad companies to yeah. pay you? What's that yeah. amount? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. When I talk about blogging, I say blogging is a long-term game. Mm -hmm. Google is the main search engine. So blog, bloggers, we talk about Google. We want to get, you know, we want to rank on Google. Right. And a lot of people create blogs. They see this flashy, like, oh, you can make money blogging. I want to do that. So people start blogs every day. Google's not going to put stuff that's like, spammy or not legit. Mm -hmm. So it can take you a while before your brand new baby website even starts ranking on the first page of Google. It took me nine months for my blog, The Geriatric Dietitian, to start getting real good traffic. Then it went really fast, like okay. exponential. But it can take anywhere from six to nine months before you even start ranking. So it is a long-term game. Mm -hmm. Don't expect to start a blog and start making money. But that's the same with any asset. You don't right. buy this house and all of a sudden expect, I'm going to be rolling in the dough. Yeah. Yeah, long-term yeah. game. Yeah. Um, so it does take time. And I think I forgot your original question, Greg. No, I was just saying that, you know, <laughs> um, like how oh, long revenue. does it take to, yeah, take to get the ad yes, revenue? Yes. Yep. So, so it takes time before you even start ranking. Right. Then you start building traffic. Right. And from there, it depends on the blog. Um, I've seen a lot of blogs qualify for a high-end ad network around the 17, 18 month mark, okay. which isn't that bad in the scheme right. of things, year and a half. Mm -hmm. And so I use a company called Mediavine. It is a high-end ad network. That's okay. one of the classy ones I'm talking about where it's not spammy clickbait. You can get on an ad network right away. Mm -hmm. You can put something called Google Ads on your website from day one. Mm -hmm. Problem is you have no traffic, so you're not really going to make money. They pay pennies. It's mm -hmm. not a lot of money, and it does slow down your website. When it slows down your website, that can slow down your ability to grow massive traffic. Okay. So I recommend focusing on growing your traffic, getting lots of people coming mm -hmm. to the site, and wait to qualify for a high-end ad network. Right. So Mediavine, um, there's actually some exciting changes. Um, to qualify for Mediavine back in the day, you had to have 50,000 sessions. Think of sessions as someone coming to your website. Right. So it took me about 17 months with my blog to qualify for Mediavine at 50,000 sessions. Now, Mediavine, within the last few months, created a new program called Journey. And you only need 10,000 sessions to qualify oh, wow. for ads on your website. And again, Mediavine, tried, trusted, lots of healthcare pros have this, um, they use this platform. They pay you really well. They are wonderful to work with. And so now you can get in for just 10,000 sessions. Right. So that opens the door actually for a lot of bloggers. So even when I say it's a long-term game, you know, realistically, if you play your SEO card right and you put out the content, you could start making a good chunk of passive income in under a year where it took me about a year and a half to start making good money through the right. blog. Okay. So this is, this is really powerful. You guys, um, one of the things that I talk about in my SSHC innovator path is, um, you know, how to do a lot of one to many things. And what I just feel like is so cool with you, you're kind of like my poster child for one to many because, uh, the blog is basically your, your traffic, source. It's your, it's what you're using to get eyeballs. And in any business, whether you have a clinic, whether you um, are going to go online, you're doing a, hy a hybrid you know, version. In order for any of those things to work, like you, you have to have traffic. Yeah. Like traffic is the holy grail, right? And so what I love so much about what you do is that there's such an emphasis on putting out value yes. to get traffic. Yeah. And then once you have traffic, now you have all the leverage, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, people are like, oh, I want to do a course. Okay. That's great. You can go do a course, yeah. but if you don't have traffic, there is no possibility that the course is going to, is going to take off. Yeah. Right. Um, if you say, Hey, I want to be an affiliate, right? Well, that's great. But if you don't have traffic, there's no way that people can even see the products that you are recommending, you know, to yeah. them. So I, I just want you all to understand that nothing happens without traffic. Yeah. Nothing happens without, you know, traffic. And, and that needs to be your focal point. So uh, if, let's just say somebody's like, 
like I don't necessarily care to be a a blogger. Um, can you just talk about the importance of traffic? Yeah, yeah. Like the importance of traffic and the importance of of not only just having eyeballs, but being an authority in an area like how you're an authority with, you know, with geriatric nutrition, right? Yeah. So yeah, just talk about the importance of traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I often, I like to break down how we make money and I like to oversimplify it. To make money, you need something to sell and someone to sell it to. And as you alluded to, you can have the best products in the whole world, but if you don't have anyone to sell to, you're not going to make money. You could have a massive following on social media, but if you don't have anything quality to sell them, you're not going to make money. Mm -hmm. So that's why I love blogging because it combines the traffic with the something to sell. And that is that kind of sweet spot of where we make money. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things um, also that I love about blogging is that we're not relying on social media where social media changes the algorithms Mm -hmm. all the time. Your account gets hacked. You lose that audience because it was never yours to belong with. Mm -hmm. And, and I feel like with social media, it's like, you have to be consistent with your posting. If in a lot of the algorithms, if you're not posting every day, or at least a few times a week, Like if you take a time, like a little gap off, it's almost like starting from square one. And so I see healthcare professionals putting out these amazing Instagram posts Mm -hmm. that most people, let's be honest, they're just scrolling, maybe a double tap. They're not actually reading that amazing content. If they were to take that content, put it on a blog, done the correct way, utilizing SEO, and it's a good quality article that, you know, a topic that people are searching for, then people can find this article day after day year after year yeah. versus social media where it's here today, gone tomorrow. Unless someone like goes back and like, you know, does that like binge of all your stuff, they're probably not going to see it. So I feel like with blogging, it's a way to take your content and make it more long-term game. Mm. And it does build that traffic because how many of us are creating content written or verbal? If you're, you know, doing podcasts, transcribe it, have a VA, um, put it in a way that could be optimized for a blog. So there's lots of different ways that you can do this, but I just think if we're creating content anyways, mm-hmm. why not have in a blog that can build that massive traffic and open the door for you to make more money? Yeah. Um, I think we call it content value over time. There's two yeah. different types of content that you can you can put out there. You can have your content that you would see on Instagram or Facebook or whatnot. And that content lasts for probably about 24 to 72 hours tops, right? But then there's a content value over time, which is that it's kind of like wine right? It gets more valuable as it ages, yeah. right? And so could you give me an example of something on your blog, something that you did maybe two, three okay. years ago, four years ago, that today still gets eyeballs on it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of my articles still get eyeballs on it. You know, every once in a while I might update stuff, but I remember um, I was I was kind of mentioning this, I think yesterday, the day before. Mm. I have one article that I really love. I wrote it my first year of blogging called Nutrition End of Life. And it talks about what Um, nutrition and eating looks like as someone's dying. Mm -hmm. And this article I wrote over a year ago, and even just the other day, I got a comment on it saying how much this article helped them, how much it changed, how they're going to take care of their aging parent as they are dying. And it's just as healthcare professionals, we want to help people. Right. And so this is an article I wrote five years ago. It is still making impact. It is still changing people's lives. And I'm not doing anything over here. I wrote Mm it one and done, and it continues to make really meaningful impact. That particular blog article gets a lot of comments because when we're dealing with the situation where someone's getting close to dying, they're eating less. A lot of caregivers and family members feel guilty of like, they're not eating. It's my fault. I need to force them to eat. And then if someone passes, they feel like, oh, they passed away because they starved to death because I didn't feed them. And they live with years of guilt. Mm. And as a Mm. geriatric dietitian, Mm. I love that I can help educate on what the dying process looks like with eating so they can understand it's not my fault. This is the normal process of death. And here's what I could do to take care of my loved one in the final days. So that one article is very meaningful. It's impacted a lot of people. And again, if I put that in a post on social media, you know, five years ago, no one would see it today, but people continue to see it and it continues to make real impact in people's life. Well, that's, that's really awesome. Okay. Last thing I want to ask you with regards to this, and then, um, and then I want to bring it back to the challenge. So an article like that, you created that article and i'm sure there's other ones that you've created that was like really really awesome but that one even five years later is still resonating with people yes it's something that people want yes can you talk about that with regards to making content that people actually want versus making the content that you want to make yes can you talk about that a little bit 
Yes. And that's actually a good point because I see a lot of people when they start a blog where they go wrong is they make a list of all the things they want to write about. Like, you know, I'm the expert. I know what my people want and I'm going to make a list of all the topics I'm going to write about. That is wrong for lots of reasons. Mm -hmm. But when we learn how to blog, we learn search engine optimization. We learn there are tools where we can actually find out what people are searching for online, the exact phrases they use, how many people are searching for every things every month. And we actually use tools that help give us ideas for creating content for our audience. And these tools also help us to create content that we could rank for on the first page of Google to drive that traffic. So th there's just, there's so much strategy behind it, yeah, yeah. but it definitely, it, it opens so many, so many doors. And, and before we talk about the challenge, I was hoping Greg, we can come back to the asset piece because yeah. I wanted to talk mm -hmm. a little bit more about the money involved. Right. Because um, I was doing, I was crunching some numbers because you had told me, you know, this is how much I paid for this house. And after almost two years, it's made about 20, around the mid 20s. Yeah, it was mid 20s. Yeah, mid 20s. Yeah, and rental income. So, income. Mm -hmm. so I pulled up my blog, The Geriatric Dietitian, and looking at how much I invested in it, 100 bucks the first year, I do have to pay money for it every year. But again, very low. Mm -hmm. I've invested in courses, I've invested in, you know, different coaching programs. So I've invested money over the years, but I wanted to look at how much money did my blog make in passive income. Mm -hmm. So I pulled it up and looking at the three year mark. So we're comparing Greg's two years for this house that was 630? 630. Yep. 630 versus my blog, which mm -hmm you know, hundred bucks for the first year, probably a couple thousand if you count all the, you know, a little bit of coaching and programs I did in the beginning. But in the first three years of the blog, it made about $70,000 in completely passive income. Mm. And this is passive income where the <laughs> blog... <laughs> and, and it's okay. also passive income where this blog continues to make thousands of dollars in passive income every month. I've been here in Blue Ridge for the last, is this day four? This is day, yeah. With, day, with yeah. travel, this yeah, is yeah. technically day five. I've been making money. Yeah. I haven't been blogging. If I were to pull up my phone right now, we'd see the, the hundreds of dollars that this blog has been making for me. Making me money, yes. Providing value to the public. That that one to many where I am actively helping people. When I Again, I see a post or like a comment on my post. I'm like, oh, yay, I helped someone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and I'm just over here, you know, learning about business, working on how I can serve more people. But I think that's the power of a blog asset is that a lot of us, you know, we want to have assets, we want to have things that bring in money, and we tend to think of those traditional assets like a house, like the stock market, all great assets. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying they're not, but a lot of people feel like, oh, I got to wait till later to where I save up a little bit more to be able to invest. Right. But if you have passion and you have time and you want to build a blog business that's going to make you lots of money, you can create a digital asset that's going to bring you in thousands of dollars with very low overhead right. month after month, year after year. And if leveraged right, you could also make active income. So right. if you're like, I want to work with clients, I want to have a group program, there's other things you can do to you know, make it not just an asset, but then also, again, that online platform for business. Right, okay. I, I think we need to talk about even more stuff <laughs> because now you've got me down a whole nother thing. So y'all, sorry, just just buckle in for a little bit. Uh, so you know the, the, the quadrant, um, uh, the cash flow quadrant is called. I don't know if you mm -hmm. ever. I, I know I've I've shared it with you at some yep. point, but basically I learned this from from Robert, you know Kiyosaki, yep. the rich dad poor dad guy, right? And so the first the first quadrant is employee, mm -hmm. the second quadrant is self employed, mm -hmm. okay, the third quadrant is business owner, mm -hmm. and then the fourth quadrant is investor, right? And so like I've kind of gone through those those quadrants, right? And what I have learned uh, over the years, especially the last like five years. Uh, as I've moved more into just dealing with investor mm -hmm. and then also business owner, is that there is no investment really, very, very, very few where it's truly passive. Yeah. Like there's going to be some work involved, right? So can you just give the example of this house versus the block, right? Even this house, yes, you know, I, I made, you know, like a couple grand, you know, last month, right? There were three times, like I was not here. It's not like I had to put the people to bed and yeah. put the covers yeah. over them and read them at bedtime. So I didn't have to do that. But there were, and, and I have a property manager company that deals with everything, yeah. most things, right? But even when something happens, like the air conditioning, yeah. uh, the thermostat unit, one of the guests bro you know, broke it. Mm -hmm. And it started blowing out hot air because they mess with our settings. Um, and who, who did they call? They called me because yeah. I'm the owner of the house. Right. So I still had to deal with stuff. Remember, my dad was in a hospital yep. and I was da 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 and I had to go and like talk to them. Okay, do this, do that, da 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 da. And then they were able to do what they needed to do. So 
I guess my point in what I'm, I'm saying is that in anything that you do, whether it is a blog, whether it is a house, there is going to be some work. Not everything is 100% passive, oh, yeah. okay? That's number one. Number two, when I look back at the assets that I have, so I have um, some commercial property, I have you know, re a residential property, I have businesses. Mm -hmm. The best asset that I believe you all should invest in is an asset to where you are providing um, value to another human, yeah. okay? Now, this does provide value, yeah. But the one that I have the most control over is the best, mm -hmm. right? Like the market here in Blue Ridge, Georgia is, is good, but it's not as good as what it was in 2020 yeah. when we're in a pandemic, right? Yep. When I'm doing a business, I can change the way that I serve you mm -hmm. and the way that I serve others very fast because yeah. I'm seeing you. Okay, what yeah. do you need now? like how we just did the last couple of days together. Yeah. It's kind of different than what we've done the first four years, right? Yeah. So so I'm saying that to you all because it's usually the least amount of investment, but it usually has the highest upside. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm seeing with what you're doing. Yeah, It's so much upside that yeah. you have. Um, this house, as it gets older, it gets, it's still a new cabin, but as it gets older, it won't be as valuable. Mm -hmm. things will break down more with a blog it seems to me like as it gets older it gets more valuable yeah there's a lot of cool things with this yeah. you know yeah so just things for you guys to think of and to understand that no matter what you do i i'm telling you if if you want to be able to have a life of financial freedom if you want to be able to have a life that you have more choices understand what i'm about to say income follows assets okay Assets give you choices. Choices create freedom. Yeah. Okay. And so whatever you do, build yourself some assets. Okay. Build yourself some assets in some way. So yeah. with that said, um, remind everybody of okay. where they can follow you <laughs> and let's remind them of what's going to happen yeah. September 3rd to 5th. Yes. Yeah. So you can follow me on Instagram at the Katie Dodd. I would say that's probably where I'm most active. I also have a Facebook group for dietitians called Dietitian Side Hustle. I do have a podcast called Dietitian Side Hustle. Even though it's dietitian, any healthcare professional can listen to it. Yeah. Um, so the challenge is the three-day blog biz challenge. I actually did this challenge at the beginning of this year, mm -hmm. and it was so much fun that I'm like, I got to bring this back. Yeah. And what I love about this challenge is that it's very low cost. $3 a day for general admission, which gives you access to watch, watch the challenge, participate, and do all the things. And then there is a VIP for just $30. So we're not talking lots of money here. And that gives you lifetime access to recordings. You get Q&A with me so that way you can pick my brain with any burning questions that you have so over this challenge what you're going to do is build out the bones of your blog business we're going to dive into mindset what are all of those things that are going to hold us back from actually implementation of what we're you know working on during this challenge what are the things that are going to get in the way from us reaching these big goals mm -hmm. because it is a long-term game it could be easy to listen to this episode of this podcast and be like oh that's awesome i'm gonna do it but then we get back into the grind and we're like, uh, maybe later, maybe later, later becomes never and mm -hmm. all those things. So we dive into mindset. We dive into building your blog brand. So getting clarity and like, who's my niche? Who am I going to serve? Um, getting all those details of knowing what your brand is for your blog. So that way, when you're ready to start, you got it all laid out. And then we dive into creating a money plan. So that is how am I going to make money through this blog now and later? Because if you're a business and it's not just a hobby blog, businesses make money. So how are you going to start building out like that long-term passive income, but how can you also leverage the blog now to make money? And I feel like we could talk forever, but I think at one point we were talking about how um, I heard you say the word authority. Mm -hmm. And I, I think about how having a website gives you authority right. in your space. I am not the only geriatric dietitian, but if you Google things related to geriatric nutrition, my blog comes up, there's my face. So I actually have opportunities and people reach out to me. They see me as an authority in this space. I get opportunities to work with brands. I get opportunity to make some pretty darn good money because I have this authority. Right. So there's lots of ways to make money through the blog. I call it now and later money. So the, the now money where you could start making money now through doing lots of different things, but then that, you know, the asset piece of the passive income. Right. Right. And then we wrap it all up and we make a plan of like, okay, now how are you going to implement and make this a reality? So if you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, that sounds cool. Come join me for three days. Yeah. I, I love working with, with you guys. I love helping people dream and scheme, make a plan. 
And again, this isn't just information. You're going to be doing work, not a lot. <laughs> I work with a lot of side hustlers, so it's not going to be a ton, but you're still going to implement and not just learn. It's not just me talking at you. It's you actually thinking critically and making a plan for your blog biz. One of the things I love um, with challenges is that in a challenge, it's called a challenge because we are challenging you. Yeah. And we are challenging you to do something in a very condensed period of time. Yeah. Uh, and what I love is I love the fact that someone could actually have their their um, the the framework. They can have the guts of this asset built out. It's almost like you're yeah. building out the entire uh, floor plan, the blueprint yeah. for the house, right? And then after the challenge, you know, you can start to put all the pieces and the framing and all that other stuff and the furniture and all that th those things to build this yeah. asset that will eventually make you money. Yeah. Um, I, I love it. You know, I'm going to say one other thing as well. Uh, I think when you see people do challenges, uh, please understand this. And I can say this about you. Uh, when you do a challenge, this is not a 30 minute presentation. This is not a 45 minute. Okay. I'm here. And that's it. This is days together. It's a condensed you know, period of time, yeah. but it's days together. And that usually means that the person on the other side, that's presenting this information to you and it's helping you with something. They know a lot. They know a lot. You know a lot. Like, you know a lot. You're able to bring a lot of value to people. And that's why they're able to do challenges. I was talking to a client the other day. And he was like, um, he, he actually just did a challenge. And he was like, man, I don't see anybody else in this industry doing challenges. I was like, because they don't know enough. I was like, well, you don't know a lot. Like, you can't do it. Like, you, you only have a, a certain amount of information. That, mm -hmm. But you have a lot of great information. Um, you've helped so many people do this. Really proud of you. Proud of what you've done. So um, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited for you and excited for the challenge. Guys, go ahead and sign up for her challenge. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a dollar a day for crying out loud. All right. And don't use that a little amount to not take it seriously. Okay. It's just a way for you all to not have money be an issue of why you actually don't yeah. start to build an asset. So I love what you're doing. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Hey, um, anything else you'd want to say? Yeah. Just a reminder, go to katydodd.com for the link to sign up. And thanks so much for having me on, Grant. Yeah. This is a cool, <laughs> this is a cool setup. So anyways, uh, that's it. You guys, I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Uh, go ahead and go to the katydodd.com um, and uh, sign up for the challenge. All right. We'll see you next time. That was easy.